Okay, 27B. We're doing the same thing. We're solving inequalities, but the inequalities, they've ramped up a little bit in, in difficulty level, just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve uh, quadratics um, with inequalities. And I think that's the title of this lesson. What do they say? They say solve... Where did I see that? Yeah, solve a quadratic inequality. That's what they call it. So let's write that down. Um, actually, i got to change this stuff around a little bit so I can write. So this is a quadratic inequality. So you should think of certain things when you see this. When you think quadratic, what are you thinking of? What's the first thing that pops in your head when you think of quadratic? Square plus yeah, ax plus squared plus what? ax squared plus bx. BX. Plus C. Plus C. All right. Okay. And normally, if you thought of quadratic, you would say equals zero, wouldn't you? All right. If you had a quadratic equation. But this time, we're not having a quadratic equation. What are we dealing with? Not equal signs, but inequalities. That's right. Okay. So it's an inequality. And what do we think of when we think of inequalities? Yeah, it's not equal, but give me some symbols. Greater than or less than, right. Okay, let's just say greater than for the sake of argument. Okay, and put a zero right there. So this is an example of a quadratic inequality. Doesn't look much different, does it? Except for that little thing right there. But that little thing right there causes a little bit of extra problems for us that it didn't cause when we had an equal sign there. Okay, so we're going to solve it just like we've always solved it. And then, but it's it, towards the end, we're going to have to do something a little different. So let me give you a little equation. And uh, let me find it. Here it is right there. So here's your first quadratic inequality. And let's go to a different color. So here's the first example. We're going to go x squared minus x minus 12. And we're going to go, we'll go less than this time. Because this could be less than or greater than, correct? This thing up here for inequality. Or it could be or equal to as well. All right? But we're just going to go with less than on this. Now, first thing we're going to do, remember I said, you do everything the same, but this causes a little problem at the end. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to forget about that for a second. Just, just well, a minute, okay? We'll, we'll forget about this for a minute or two. Then we're going to come back to that inequality. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this, but I'm going to rewrite this with an equal sign. And I'll show you why. So it's going to be x squared minus x minus 12. And we're going to put it equals 0. Now we're going to come back to this. I'm not forgetting about that inequality, all right? I will come back to this. You guys want to take notes? You want to take notes? That'd be a good idea. All right, so yeah. All right, so here we go. Um, you should be able to solve for this. We just had a test on it or something, a quiz or whatever. We had something on this, didn't we? So what would you do here? Yeah, let's factor, right? So let's set up our parentheses. And this, this does work out pretty nice where we can factor it. And um, we'll put an x here and an x here. Go ahead, Ashley. Would you say x what? Good. Minus 4 and plus 3 because when I take the um, the outside and inside, that's going to be a negative 1x. Everybody see that? Because they add up to be negative 1 and they multiply to be negative 12. Everybody's familiar with that. We've done a ton of that stuff before. Now, we set it equal to 0, right? So what are we going to do with both of these things? Seven. Set them equal to 0. Now, at this point, you probably could just tell me what x and equals here and x equals here, but I'm just going to write it out. So we remember y, x is what it is. So we set them both equal to 0, and now we solve for x. And that's really simple. Add a 4 to both sides. On this one, subtract a 3 from both sides, so you get negative 3. It's not my answer, though. If this question just said equals, then we'd be OK. Because, but it doesn't say equal, does it? It says less than. So look, if I plug this in, let's plug a 4 into this. If I plugged a 4 into this, 4 squared is 16 minus 4, which is what? 12 minus 12 is what? It's equal to 0. So 4 makes this thing equal to 0, doesn't it? But that's not really what I'm trying to find. What am I trying to find? I'm trying to find what x's make this less than 0. Does 4 make this less than 0? No. All right, so we got to figure out what numbers make this thing less than 0. Now, if I stuck a negative 3 in for this, negative 3 would make this thing equal to 0 as well, wouldn't it? But again, i got to figure out what numbers am I going to use to make this thing less than 0, not equal to 0. But these are going to be helpful. Okay, This x equals 4 and x equals negative 3 are going to be very, very helpful. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a graph. 
It's just one of these straight line graphs. Okay, no y-axis or anything, so it's pretty easy. So put a little arrow here, a little arrow here. So there's my straight line. Now, what I'm going to do right here, these are some key points, and I'm going to put both of these points on my little number line. All right, don't fill it in with a whole bunch of other numbers. Just use the two numbers that were given here. Well, negative 3 is the smaller of the two, right? So I'll put a negative 3 right here, and 4 is the larger of the two, so I'll put a 4 right here. So again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to find what values of x make this thing less than 0. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pick a couple numbers, throw them in, and see which ones work. And that's basically all you have to do. I'll show you what we're. I'll show you we're going to do. Look, you got a bunch. You got three different places you can choose from. You've got all these numbers that are less than three. You got all the numbers that are greater than four, and you also have these numbers in between, don't you? So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a number to the left of three, in between the two, and to the right of four, and we're going to plug them back in here and find out which of those values make this thing less than zero. Does it make sense? Now, what kind of a number is less than zero? Any kind of a number that's less than zero would be a negative number, wouldn't it? Okay? So we're trying to find what values on this number line make this thing less than zero or make it negative. All right? So let's pick a number. What's a real easy number to the left of negative three that you could choose that you could plug into this thing? Yeah, I would go as small as I could, wouldn't you? So what would be a good number? Negative four. Let's put let's plug a negative four in for this. Now watch. The interesting thing is, I could pick any number that's less than negative three, and I'm going to get the same sine value, positive or negative, if I plug it into this little inequality. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll, we'll do a couple of them just to show you that it that it works. So let's stick a negative four in for this. All right. So if I put a negative four in for this, if I put negative four squared, I have to square the negative and square the four. So what do I get for that? 16. Good. And let's um, and let's put it in for here. Now it's minus what? Negative 4. Not minus 4 because we're putting in a negative 4. So it's minus negative 4, which is plus 4. Okay, and then we go minus 12. Let's see what kind of number we get. I don't actually care about the actual number value. I just care about the sign of that number, okay, if it's positive or negative. I'm trying to find out what values of x are going to make this thing negative. All right? So let's put a number in here. 16 plus 4 is 20. 20 minus 12 is 8. And it's just not an 8. It's a what? It's a positive 8. So I care about the positive. So look, if I take a number to the left of negative 3 and I plug it into this thing right here, what kind of number do I get out of it after I, after I plug it in? I get a positive number, don't I? So this is what I do. Anything. Anything at all that's to the left of negative 3, if I plug it into this little equation right here, this little inequality, I'll always get a positive number. If you don't believe me, try another number that's in this range over here. Try negative 5, okay? Try negative 5. So let's do that in our head. Negative 5 squared is 25. Minus a negative 5 is plus 5. Minus 12. What's that? 30 minus 12. And that comes out to a positive number, doesn't it? So I could pick any number that I wanted to the left of negative 3 or less than negative 3, and I'm always going to get what, ki what kind of a number? A positive number. See what I'm doing? I just pick a number that's in this range somewhere, plug it into this original thing, and find out what kind of number do, do I get. So is that going to be one of my answers? Is that a solution for this? No, because I get a positive number. What am I looking for? I'm looking for answers that give me a negative number because this says less than. Okay? Let's do this. Let's try a number bigger than 4. Alright? So let's go greater than 4. What's an easy number greater than 4? Let's try a 5. Okay, let's plug a 5 into this thing. Let's see what we get. Now this is a positive 5 this time, isn't it? So it could be different. It might not be. I don't know. So let's put a positive 5 into this. So positive 5 squared is 25. Minus 5 Right? It's not minus negative this time. It's just minus 5 and then minus 12. What's that? 25 minus 5 is 20. Minus 12 is? It's a positive 8, isn't it? So any number that I pick to the right of 4 is going to give me what kind of sign? It's going to give me a positive. So do you see why I put the positive here? Any number to the right greater than positive 4 is going to give me a positive number. Anything to the left or less than negative 3 is going to give me a positive number. 
Well, let's try a number in between these two. So what would be a nice easy number that you could pick that's between negative 3 and 4? Zero would be a good number to pick, wouldn't it? Okay, you could pick two. All right, you could pick one. You could pick negative two if you wanted to, right? But what's a super easy number to pick that's between negative three and four? I think zero is an easy number, okay? So what are we going to do? We're going to plug it into this thing again. That's why I put a box around this because we use this a few times. So let's put a zero in for this. What's zero squared? Zero. Zero minus zero is zero. Zero minus 12 is negative 12. So what kind of sign is negative 12? It's a negative, obviously, right? And so that means any number in between negative 3 and 4 will always come out to a negative answer. Try another number. Leslie, well, you said 2, right? Let's put in a 2. Let's see if it comes out negative. 2 squared is 4. Minus 2 is 2. 2 minus 12 is negative, right? And I don't even care what the actual number is. I just care what the sign is. All right, it comes out to a negative number. So I was right there, wasn't I? Okay, you can pick any number between negative 3 and 4, and this will come out to be a negative with me? So what's my answer? What are my possible values for x? What x values are going to make this thing come out to be less than 0 or negative? Anything between negative 3 and positive 4. You got it. Anything between negative 3 and positive 4. Now how do we show that on a graph? Uh, do we put uh, brackets? Do we put parentheses? We put parentheses, parentheses because this is what? Thing. It's open this way and it's open this way, and then what do we do in between? Color. Yeah, we color in between. Okay, and like that. It might not be thick enough. Oops. There we go. All right, you get the idea. Kind of just shade that. In. I don't know. Is that any better? <laughs> All right. Whatever. All right, and that's what our graph looks like right there. So that's our graph. Now, how do we write our answer, though? How do we write this in interval notation? We've got our graph, which is very, very helpful to change it into interval notation. So um, how do we write it? Parentheses, Parentheses negative 3, then a comma, then a 4, and then a parentheses. Now, it looks like an ordered pair, doesn't it? It looks like you go to the left 3 and up 4, but it's not what it is. This is interval notation. This is different. Okay, this means x can be any number that's between negative 3 and 4. Can it... Can x actually equal negative 3? No, because if I stick negative 3 in for this, I'll get this to be equal to 0. And this doesn't say equal to 0, does it? It just says less than 0. What would this answer look like if this was less than or equal to? Just brackets. That's right. The only thing different would be putting brackets right there. What do you think? Um, what if this didn't say less than? What if this said greater than? What do you think? Yeah, everything to the left of negative 3 and everything what? To the right of positive 4. How would we write that? Because we're gonna, this next problem that I'm going to do actually comes out like that. All right? So I'm just going to give you a little sneak preview here. So what if? Now, the problem didn't originally say this, but what if it said greater than? So that means what are all the values that I put in for x that are going to make this thing positive? All right? Well, everything this way makes it positive and everything this way makes it positive, doesn't it? So let's figure out how to do this. What is a, what, this keeps on going forever this way, right? So I'm at negative infinity, correct? This means everything going that way forever. What's that? That's positive infinity. So how in the world do I write that? I actually write it as two different things in my interval notation. Okay, let me show you. So what's this part of it going to be? It's going to be parentheses, negative infinity to what? To negative 3. Now it just says greater than, so what do we put? Parentheses. And then we do another one over here. It's like two separate ones. Okay, so what do we do over here? Parentheses, and then we go from 4 to where? To positive infinity. Now, in between, I don't know if you remember this back when you were in elementary school. Um, do you remember like union and intersection and stuff like that? Do you remember any of that stuff? And like is an element of, this was a big thing. I think you ever, you probably never even heard of it, but like back in the 70s they came up with this thing called the new math or something. And this might have been old, I'm not really sure, but they introduced this like intersection, like intersection, like look like that. Anybody remember that? No? And union looked like a U. And then like if you said something is a member of a set, we said like is a member of a set. Nobody remembers any? You, you've seen that stuff before? Yeah. 
you don't see it too much anymore, but every once in a while you'll see this kind of stuff. And here in this interval notation, if you have two things right here, what we're going to do is we're going to say union. So that's all you got to remember, okay? When the when you have everything to the left and everything to the right, and you want to include them both, you put a little union symbol, that U stands for union, and then that would be your answer. Now that's your answer if it said greater than. This is your answer to the original problem that said what? Less than. You see it? So really, that wasn't that much harder. What was, what was the new thing that we did today, basically? We did our little graph, right? We solved for x. We put an x here and an x right here. And then we had three different sections, didn't we? We had this section to the left. We had this section to the right and this section in the middle. So what did we do? We just picked a number. We picked any number that fit in that section, threw it in here, and saw if it worked, right? Did it make it negative or did it make it positive? And if it made it positive, I put a plus over top of that section. If it made it negative, I put a minus over that section. And then I can take a look. What are they asking? Now remember, they didn't originally ask for the greater than thing, did they? They asked for less than. So what are we looking for? We're looking to see which section makes this stuff less than zero or negative. Everybody got that? And this section made it negative. And that's the section that we write down. So that is our answer right there. Not that. All right, let's do another one. That wasn't half bad, was it? You think? Yeah, because it's the math, the actual math that we were doing was pretty much like we've always done. So let's do another one. Let's go 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. And that's greater than or equal to 0. Now, this says greater than this time, okay? And it says or equal to. So what do you think we're going to introduce to this one that we didn't have brackets, right? We'll probably have brackets on this, right, because it says or equal to. But the first thing we do, we forget about the inequality for right now. So what's the first thing we do? Set this what? Equal to zero. That's right, because we want to find those little marker points, if you want to call them, right? Because... Right here and right here is where we mark on our graph. Those are the first numbers that we put on our graph. So that's what we want to find. We want to find those numbers that are going to be on our graph. So it's minus 12, and um, we'll put equal to 0 for right now. And I'll save you the time worrying about the factoring. I'll just write it out. But you could have tried a few times, right, and probably got to that. Might have tried it the very first time, to tell you the truth. And so what do we do with these two? We set them both equal to 0. So 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, and x plus 4 is equal to 0. And we solve for x. So we add a 3, divide by 2, so x is 3 over 2. Well, what's 3 over 2? It's just 1 and a half, right? Because that helps us. We'll want to know what that fraction is so we can graph it on our number line. And what's this going to be? This is x equals negative 4. Everybody good with that? All right, let me just copy this and put it right here so I can remember. All right, and now we can scooch everything up. So that was pretty basic, all right? We, we've done a lot of that stuff before, just solving for x. So now's the new stuff. Now's what we want to, um, we want to graph this thing. So I'll put a little horizontal line, put an arrow on both ends, and let's put the numbers in here. So what did we solve for? We solved for x. x was negative 4, so we're going to come over here and put a negative 4 on the left-hand side, put one and a half over here, and we'll just put one and a half. All right, that's good enough. Everybody good so far? So now, what are we going to do? Plug in numbers. Yeah, let's plug in some numbers because you got three spaces, you got three areas. Do you see what I'm talking about when I say the three areas? Because look, I've broken it up into everything to the left of negative four. I've got this area, everything to the right of one and a half, and what else? I got everything between negative 4 and 1 and a half. So I got three different sections, three different areas that I want to choose from. Okay? What do you think the easiest number that I could possibly pick that lies on this number line? Zero. Okay, where is zero? Is it to the left of this, to the right of this, or is it in between? It's in between, right? So zero is somewhere in between, isn't it? So let's pick a zero. Right? And if you want to put a zero, it doesn't have, you know, it doesn't matter if it lies exactly in between, but zero is somewhere in between there, isn't it? So let's, let's stick a zero in here and see what we get. So if I put a zero, two, 
or 0 squared is 0 times 2. That's 0. That's 0. Minus 12. So what kind of a number? If I pick any number in between here, what kind of answer am I going to get? I'm going to get a negative, aren't I? Because 0 is in between these two. I could pick any number. It doesn't matter. Any number that's between negative 4 and 1 and a half, it's always going to give me the same exact sign. 0 is the easiest number that I could pick. So everything in between here is going to give me negative. Well, is that what they're asking for, though? They're not. They're asking for everything that's what? Greater than okay, or equal to 0, which means I'm looking for the positive numbers. Let's put a number in for both of these just to make sure that it does work. What's the, what's the easiest number you could probably pick over here on this side? Maybe negative 5, right? That's the smallest number. So let's put a negative 5 in for this. So it's going to be 2 times negative 5 squared is 25, right? Plus 5 times negative 5 and then minus 12. So what's that? That's 50 minus 25 minus 12. 50 minus 25 is 25 minus 12. That's what? Positive, isn't it? That came out positive. So everything to the left of negative 4 is going to come out positive. Take a wild guess what it's going to be on the to the right of 1 and a half. It'll probably be positive as well, wouldn't it? All right. So let's just give it a shot just to make sure it is. Okay. Because there are times, not many times, but there are times where just because this is negative doesn't mean both of these are going to both be positive. I would say most of the time that's going to happen, but you just want to make sure. So what's the easiest number you can pick to, that's to the right? Two. Yeah, I'd pick a two. So let's put a two in for here. So we can kind of do a little bit of this in our head. Two squared is four. Four times two is eight. Plus five times two is ten. That's 18 minus 12 is what? positive, isn't it? I don't even care what the number is. I just care that it's positive. So that means any number to the right of 1 and a half is going to be positive. You with me? So what numbers do I care about? What sections of this graph do I care about? I care about the section that is greater, right? If you look up here, greater or equal to 0. So I'm looking for the positive numbers, aren't I? So where are the positive numbers? Well, everything to the left of negative 4 and everything to the right of 1 and a half. Right? So if you remember, you got a negative infinity going this way, so what's that going to look like? It's going to be negative infinity all the way to where? All the way to negative 4. Okay. Now, what kind of a thing do we put at the end of this? Do we put a parenthesis like we did in the other problem? Now we put a bracket. Why do we put a bracket? Because it says or equal or equal to, that's right. It says or equal to, so I put a bracket right there. Oh, I didn't graph this, did I? I probably should have graphed it. Let's graph it another color so it stands out a little bit. So if I was going to graph this thing, what would it be? It would be a bracket right here, and then everything shaded that way. Okay? And then what would it be here? It would be a bracket here, and then everything shaded that way. You see that? So that's what the graph looks like, because they may ask you to graph it and then write it in interval notation. So there's your graph, and what's your interval notation? we got to do the second part. Where do we start here on the left-hand side? It's a bracket, then we put 1 and a half, or I'm going to write 3 halves. It's a little nicer than writing 1 and a half. Comma, where do we go? Keep on going forever, which is positive infinity. What do we always put with infinity? Parentheses, because you can never get to infinity, can you? So, and what do you put in between these two? The union, right. Whether or not you understand the union stuff, that's okay. You just, just know you stick a big old U in between them. And that's your interval notation right there. That's your answer. This is your graph right up here, all the yellow stuff. That's the graph, and this is your interval notation. Doesn't your interval notation kind of mirror what the graph looks like? Yep. Yeah. goes from negative infinity to negative 4, and this goes from 3 halves or 1 and a half all the way to positive infinity, right? So once you get the graph, the interval notation is a piece of cake. Wouldn't you agree? Yep. All right, you want to try one more? Sure you do. What's that? We getting the hang of it? Yeah, I don't think it's that bad, is it? I, I probably made a, a bigger deal at the beginning when I said, you know, it's, we ramped it up a little bit. Um, but we did, right? Would you agree? I mean, we did. We do have to do some extra stuff to it than when it was an equal sign. So you, you would agree that we did pump it up just a little bit, right, from what we had before. Look at this one. Um, 
there's two examples. I'll, let me do the easier one, and um, I don't know if we'll have time to do them both. This is greater than or equal. All right, what did we introduce here that we didn't have before? Would you consider this a quadratic inequality? No. They call this a rational inequality. Well, you definitely see why they call it an inequality because of the greater greater than. Excuse me. Um, why rational? What's that word rational? Fraction. It's a fraction, right? Because it's got the word ratio in it, right? So anything, anytime you see the word rational, you're dealing with fractions, and that's exactly what we have right here, isn't it? Okay. Well, what we're going to do is this. Remember all the other ones? We always had a zero over here on the end, didn't we? We had a zero there. Whoops. Oops. <laughs> And we had a zero on the end here. We had a zero on the end here. So guess what we're going to do with this rational one? We're going to make this so we have a zero on the on the right side here. Okay, so what are we going to have to do? Pleasant. You're going to add a one? Will that get rid of it? Yeah, you're going to subtract a one from both sides. But you've got to be careful because you have a fraction. So um, let's do this in another color. So I'm going to subtract a one from here, but I have to subtract a one from here as well. But you've got to be very careful when you subtract a 1 from a fraction. I'll show you. I guess you can call it a shortcut. It's not really a shortcut, but watch. I need to write this so I have a common denominator, don't I? All right, so I can't just say 5 minus 1 and then over x plus 4. What's this going to be? I want a common denominator because this is 1 over 1, so I want a x plus 4 as my denominator. If this is just a 1, what am I going to put on top? x plus 4. Do you see that that's a 1? That's minus 1, isn't it? And why did we do that? Because we wanted a 0 over here on the right-hand side. Let's write this a little bit nicer. So we have a common denominator now, x plus 4, and now you just add up this. Now you've got to be careful, though. You're subtracting. You're not just subtracting an x and adding a 4, are you? You're subtracting this whole thing. So what do I have to do with that negative? Distribute it. Okay, you've got to be careful with that. That's where a lot of people mess up. They get a little sloppy. Got to be real, real, real meticulous on this, okay? So it's distribute the negative through there. So it's 5 minus x, what? Minus 4, right? Okay? I'm showing you every little tiny step. Some of you guys might have been able to do that in your head, this, you know, this in between step, but I want to show you everything. So watch what we have. We got 5 minus 4 is 1 minus x over x plus 4, and that's greater than or equal to 0. So we really haven't even started solving for x yet. The only thing that we did was try to get rid of this 1 and stick a 0 on the right-hand side. And then I simplified my fraction on the left-hand side. When you have a rational inequality, you just want one numerator, and then you want one, what, denominator. Okay? So that's how we want it. We don't want it split up into something that looks like this. We just want one numerator and one denominator, and that's what we have right here. So now what we're going to do, you know how before when the things were being multiplied together and you set them both equal to zero? Well, these are being divided, aren't they? But we're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to take the top and set that equal to zero. Then we're going to take the bottom and set that equal to zero. So let's do that. So 1 minus x equals zero. And then we're going to go x plus 4, and we're going to set that equal to 0. And then we're going to solve for x. Add an x to both sides, so x is positive 1 here. Subtract a 4 from both sides, and that's negative 4. That's not my answer, though, because I want to find values of x that make this thing, what? Greater than. So what do you think we're going to do? We're going to do the graph. Exactly right. Very similar to what we did with the quadratics, all right? But we're not multiplying things together, we're dividing. So let me scooch this down so I can see this. Actually, let's get rid of this thing and this thing just gets in the way. And we'll scooch this over, put it right in the middle, all right? All right, so there's our line, and so we're, what are we going to put? What are we going to put on the left-hand side? Put the negative 4, because that's smaller, right? And put the positive 1 right here. And now we're going to have to put some numbers in. Um, let's go back to the red. 
So let's put some numbers in. We got three sections here. We got everything to the left of, ne of negative 4. We got everything to the right of positive 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we got all that stuff in between, don't we? So, um, and remember, this is what we're putting it into right there. Okay, yes? Because this is, this is the same thing. We just changed it around a little bit. This is a lot easier to see because when you had the 1 there, you'd have to plug it in. It doesn't really show you what's positive, what's negative. If I said greater than 0, that means any number that's greater than 0 is positive. Now, if I said greater than 1, well, there's a lot of, I mean, you know, anything between 0 and 1 is positive, and it's still not greater than 1. So I always want this greater than 0. So this is what I'm using. I'm not using the original, but all I did, this is just a manipulation of the original, right? We didn't really, we just changed it around a little bit. We just got rid of that 1, found a common denominator. So this basically is the same exact thing as the original problem. But this is what we're plugging it into because we want to find out what values are going to make this thing greater than zero or positive. All right, so let's do what we did before. Plug some numbers in. Uh, what's the easiest number? Zero. Zero. So where is zero on here? It's in between, isn't it? Now, both of these, or actually all three of these problems, zero has always been in between the two. It's not always going to be that way all the time. Sometimes it could be the left, sometimes it could be the right. In these, they just happen to be in between, okay? So don't think that that's always going to happen. But zero in this case is in between negative four and one. So let's stick a zero in for this. Now watch, this is a little bit different because we're putting it into the top and we're going to put it into the bottom, right? And we want to see what makes this thing, you know, is it going to make it positive? Is it going to make it negative? So let's stick a zero in for this. 1 minus 0, so 1 minus 0 is what? 1, or positive 1, right? I don't even care about the number. I just care about the sign. Over what? Stick a 0 in for the bottom. 0 plus 4 is positive 4. So what's a positive over a positive? It's equal to positive. So any number that you pick between negative 4 and 1 is going to give you what kind of sign? A positive. And you could have picked any other number. You could have picked a negative 3, negative 2. You could have picked a negative 1, right? You could have picked a fraction if you wanted to, but that would be silly, wouldn't it? Pick the easiest number possible. So everything in here is going to be positive. What do you think might be true about the stuff on the ends? Probably going to be, what do you think? Negative, because we already got our positives in between. Probably negative on the other side. Let's just stick them in just to make sure. Okay, that's what it is. What's an easy number you're going to pick over here? Yeah, let's pick negative 5. Let's put a negative 5 in for this. So it's 1 minus negative 5. Oops. 1 minus negative 5, which gives you what? A positive 6, right? But again, I just care about the sign. Let's stick a negative 5 in for this. Negative 5 plus 4. What's negative 5 plus 4? It's a negative. What's a positive divided by a negative? Mm. It's a negative, isn't it? So everything to the left of negative 4 is going to be negative. Let's do it one more time. It doesn't take that long, right, to plug a number in. So let's pick a number that's greater than 1. Let's try 2. That's pretty easy. So 1 minus 2. What's 1 minus 2? It's negative, right? Let's put the 2 in for this. 2 plus 4. What's 2 plus 4? It's positive. What's a negative divided by a positive? It's negative. Everybody see that? So any number that you pick that's greater than 1 is going to give you a negative answer. Any number that you pick that's less than negative 4 is going to give you a negative answer. Any number you pick between negative 4 and 1 is going to give you a what? Positive answer. What are we looking for? What are we trying to find? Positive. Everything that's positive. How do you know that? Because of this thing right here. Because it says we want to find all the numbers that make this thing positive, greater than 0. So it's all the numbers in between. So let's graph it first. Okay, so all the numbers between, and are we going to have a parenthesis or a bracket? Bracket. How do you know bracket? That's right, because it says or equal to, right? And then so we shade, oops, a little crooked shading, all right, anyway, you get the idea. We'll shade, <laughs> there you go, everything in between. So once you shade everything in between, it's easy to do your interval notation, isn't it? All right, so what's your interval notation here? It's a bracket, negative 4, comma, 1, and the bracket. And there's your answer. There's your graph. There's your interval notation. That What does that mean? That means any number between negative 4 and 1 is going to satisfy this, this inequality. It's going to make this thing work. Everybody got that? So it's kind of the same thing with the fractions, isn't it? It's pretty much the same basic idea. All right, that was a lot of teaching. Look at that, 35 minutes. I hardly ever go thir over 30 minutes. But um, 
that was definitely something that you need to um, to go over again. Okay, I really, really encourage you. Okay, take 30 minutes out of your night tonight and sit there and watch it again. Take some notes as I'm teaching it for the second time, because so many times I tell parents I was a wrote I wrote a parent an email uh, this week already yesterday, and I said have your student have your child go to the YouTube page and don't just sit and watch it like a movie sit and watch it with your notebook in front of you taking notes have your mouse in hand pause it every once in a while it may take you more than a half an hour okay but this is one of those lessons that you really want to go over and uh, make sure that you know what you're doing on this alright okay let me give you a worksheet and it's 27B and that'll be due tomorrow